This week on The Gun Room, we're taking a look at one of the newest guns to come out of the Dan Wesson lineup, the much anticipated DWX. Now, Dan Wesson teased this gun back at SHOT Show 2019 before the world lost its collective mind. And I was pretty excited to see it, I have to admit, when I saw it in the booth. Since then, I've been jonesing to get my hands on one because it seemed like it was the ideal mashup of 1911 and CZ-75, two of the most iconic handguns of the 20th century brought together in the 21st. Now that I actually have one, it's more intriguing than that because it's not just 1911 and CZ-75. There's actually another couple of handguns thrown in there too. And we're gonna take this apart and you can see what the differences and similarities are. So, for example, let's go from the top side. Now the slide, it's fairly obviously 1911. I hold these two together, um, it, you can see definite similarities between the two. This is just a Springfield Armory Garrison for comparison. Garrison for comparison. I think you should patent that. Anyway, the top end of the gun looks pretty 1911-ish. It's got 1911 firing pin, firing pin stop. But when you look at the ejection port, you realize that, huh, it doesn't look like either of these guns. What you're looking at here is the locking mechanism from the SIG P220, first debuted in 1975. It's a lot easier to manufacture this on modern CNC machines than it is, say, the locking lugs in both of these guns, which mesh into recesses in the underside of the slide. So, huh, this bit isn't CZ-75 or 1911, and if we look at the muzzle, that's not CZ-75 or 1911 either. Both of these guns traditionally use bushings. Now, I know a lot of 1911s do use a bushingless barrel system these days, but it's good to see that, well, you don't have to mess around with it anyway. Now, if we take the slide off, we'll then get a look at the frame, and, well, you tell me which part goes from which gun. Okay, so I'm going to take the slide stop pin out, just using the back of the magazine. Start it, because it's pretty tight. Now, there's your slide stop pin, and if you compare that to the one on the CZ-75, you'll notice that it's about 25% bigger. CZ slide stop pins are notorious for breaking under hard use, and this should alleviate that problem. If we take the slide off, recoil spring is non-captive, it's kind of like a full length guide rod in a 1911. And so you can change that out, change your recoil spring to suit your own individual preferences. There's the barrel. And if we take a look at the locking lugs, so Browning high power style cam path and a SIG P220 style locking block in there. Uh, the extractor is external. So more like CZ-75 than a 1911, and it's quite long as well, so you should have no problems there with uh, extractor longevity, or tuning for that matter. All right, moving on to the frame. So backstrap profile is very, very CZ-75. No escaping that, but when you look at the back of the backstrap, it's actually inlet for a mainspring housing, just like a 1911. And the ambi safeties are very, very 1911 pattern. It isn't until you look at this area very closely, you realize that, hang on a minute, that looks like the chassis system out of a SIG P320. And lo and behold, it is. The front and rear guide rails and the fire control unit can both be detached out of the gun, leaving the grip itself. And this is actually the serialized component of the gun. So how useful this is gonna be in the future, I don't really know because there's a lot of machining steps in this steel grip, so, how much you're going to be saving by swapping around fire control units like a SIG? Probably not that much, but it does illustrate some of the thought that's gone into the engineering on this gun. One final component that is definitely a complete mashup is the magazine release. So it looks very much like a CZ-75 on that side, and yet it's retained by a 1911 style lock pin. Okay, so what would I use this gun for? Quite apart from just shooting it for the hell of it because it's awesome fun. As a competition gun, or the basis for building, say, a USPSA open gun, I think it's a very, very good start. 
The second thing you could use it for, if it does come eventually with an optics cut, uh, yes, you noticed that, didn't you? That it is 2022, almost 23, and this gun launched without being optics ready. So if it did have an optics cut in there, then I would probably use it in IDPA for, um, for carry optics there. Uh, obviously with it being single action only, you can't use it in USPSA carry optics, but I gotta think that the majority of people who are gonna buy this are actually just gonna buy it just for the joy of shooting it. Because like I say, take it to range, it shoots flat, it tracks very well, it's surprisingly well balanced, and it has the CZ75 Ergos, which fit the majority of people's hands. Am I gonna tell you to, you need to rush out and go and buy one of these? It is, after all, about two grand's worth of handgun. Absolutely not. But in the same vein, would I recommend that you run out and buy a Porsche as a grocery getter, or a Rolex when a Timex would do? No, they're statements. And if you like the finer things in life, then you really should check out the DWX.